All right, we're, we're being recorded. I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order. It's uh, uh, December 13th, 2022, Holiday Island City Planning Commission meeting. Let's uh, start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Chairman Keyes. Here. Vice Chair Pittman. Here. Commissioner Elwood. Here. Commissioner Graves. Here. Commissioner Mills. Here. Secretary Dumas here. Paul President. Oh. All right. We've got our quorum. Uh, we have an agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Linda made a motion to approve. I second. Ken seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Uh, we had minutes of the regular meeting of October 11th to approve. Anyone want to make a motion to approve those minutes? That should be somebody that was here probably. Yeah, that. I was here. I'll, I'll move to approve. Linda moved to approve the minutes from October 11th. Do I have a second? Second. I wasn't here. No, this is October. This is the meeting that we were all here. I know. I saw it wasn't there. I, I second. <laughs> Jerry seconded it. Okay, I'll change it. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Right, the minutes are approved. Uh, no reports, no old business. We're going to move on to new business, and I'm going to turn it over to Lynn. I can do that for a bit. Um, I put on the screen for us, we're going to look at uh, these additions that we're considering for the ordinance 22-6, uh, planning and zoning ordinance. It's the first section in 15.0. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about this when it was Linda, Dan, and I in our open discussion meeting that we had last time. So most of these edits come from that. And so it's a matter of uh, making sure the rest of the commission uh, agrees with what we did. In the first paragraph, I just inserted the uh, accessory notice of where it should be compliance or how it's going to be placed. And down in J, I highlighted the definition or the words commercial bulletin main blade in real estate because we had some discussion about what that what those should mean. So we're going to suggest that we add definitions to the definition section of the ordinance for a commercial sign. I copied these from a website called lawinsider.com. Commercial sign, any sign that's intended to be attract attention to commercial or industrial businesses, occupancy, product, goods, service, or other commercial or industrial activity for a commercial or industrial purpose. Bulletin sign. Any sign, including but not limited to posters, boards, bulletin boards, and weatherproof bulletin boards used for the purpose of notification to the public of any of an event or occurrence of public interest, such as a church service, political rally, civic meeting, or other similar event where the information may change or be updated frequently. Sound okay? Mm -hmm. A nameplate. Any non-illuminated building mounted identification sign six feet or smaller, six four feet or smaller, giving only the name, address, and or occupation of an occupant or group of occupants of the building. And finally, the real estate sign. Any temporary non-illuminated sign, freestanding, erect, excuse me, installed, erected, or displayed on a property for the notification of a building, premises, or portion thereof, if offered for sale, rent, or lease. So that would define the terms that are up there in paragraph J, the kinds of signs that are permitted. What um, about uh, home businesses, like if I do tax returns in my home? Well, um, this section 15 is non-residential accessory right. uses, so it's exactly. commercials and industrial. Also, I thought there was a something in our ordinance that said you couldn't place a sign in your business out in your yard. In a well, you don't have area. to. Could you? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm positive, not. but I thought I recalled that. I'm 
I'm not as far along as I thought I would be on this letter. Just thought I could put some of that. Non-residential accessory or it's a business for but in my past life oh, in Oklahoma, we good. allowed a uh, no larger than a uh, two by two sign uh, up close to the residence. Oh, in residential areas? In residential areas. Well, this, this is not a residential. Well, no, that is not that's what she was asking about. Yeah. But the definitions were going to be in the definition section for everyone. Right. And these are for more <clears throat> definitions. Yeah, these are definitions we're going to have to add to the definition section of the ordinance so we can define what this section or paragraph sentence J is talking about. I wonder though, under that real estate sign, okay. if there shouldn't be a size restriction on that. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. What do we want it to look like? In commercial areas. I think, I don't know, they're usually fairly, I mean, four foot by eight foot. I mean, they're usually, they're, well, commercial they're, not, they're, not, they're not, usually they're not that large. Right. <clears throat> I mean, it'd have to be a, I'm, 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 big, I'm it'd have to be a big deal to get any bigger than that. Yeah. Up at the park, there's some banners that are real estate signs that are huge. Mm -hmm. yeah, eight one. by eight, ten by ten, five by four. <clears throat> but this, that's not a residential area, is it? Right. But yeah, real estate can be anywhere. Yeah, but you, you know, you'd rather these real estate and stuff like that. These real estate signs, signs that are maybe about this big, by this big, that say for lease or something like that. Um, these real estate signs we're talking about here are only applicable to non-residential. Right. Yeah. Not in the definition section, though. Th that's true. We could spell it out for non-residential and for residential. We just add yeah. that to yeah. that for the and definition yeah. section. Or in the signage thing, you could specify what the restrictions were for residential versus commercial. Right. Um, Some way. Because there's going to be differences for sure. That'd probably be the right place to do it because this simply says it's a non illuminated freestanding sign. Mm -hmm. And then in the signage ordinance, you can specify what size and what areas. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Have differences. That'd, that'd be all right. Okay. There's a whole lot of difference between big signage and residential and, um, and business. Okay. Anything else we need to change with section 15? It's my intent then when we get through these uh, that we would uh, gather together whatever changes as a group, how many of them are, whenever we decide, I guess, to have it put into a resolution to present to the city council. So that requires a hearing and all that nine yards. So for now then we'll say 15 is pretty solid. Okay. <clears throat> The next section in our list was 16.40. It starts with that on the detached accessory units, and Linda did the 99% of the work on that. So, you want to go through it or shall I? Okay. <laughs> in that section, I highlighted uh, the things that we considered, and it was suggested in this 16.40 text about uh, what the units are for and what their intent is. Any comments from you guys that haven't seen it or talked about since we met last? Well, I, I have a question. Uh, you know, I understand what that says. Uh, there's a house for sale on Table Rock that advertises that it's five lots with multiple buildings on three of the lots. That, that wouldn't be allowed with any kind of I think I mentioned that one particularly in that last meeting and the building was only on two of the lots. The house and the two accessory buildings are just on two lots. Mm -hmm. But they have three other lots on either end. Yeah. But, and they're adjoining. They, right? And they're all adjoining. I got a question. 
Yeah. Lynn, Lynn talked me out of allowing adjoining or the detached accessory buildings on multiple adjoining lots. So the conversation was, and the direction we went with this was that they have to be adjoining lots. The principal residence and the lot adjoining is the only one you can have one detached. That's the main thought in this. Are we talking about residential or are we talking about non-residential? These are residential. These are residential? Yeah. Yes, sir. But I, it's, it's, I mean, you can open it back up for discussion if you want, but. Well, I, I know we've had, myself included, and several people that want to do something with a, a lot, and you know, just let everybody play by the same rules. But I, 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 I thought that, you know, there are only some students that should have seen, but I thought that those were on at least a couple of lots. They are on two lots. Um, the buildings and the house are on two lots. I know that the old covenants said you couldn't build a That's separate true. building on a, on a, on a lot. You had, the buildings had to be connected. Uh, they're not. He's got a storage shed. He's got a pool house. And they used to have a pool, but they covered it in. So, um, well, I so, thought we were trying to stay with the, with the covenants. In that regard, Ken, down on the very end of that section, it's called further notes. We talked about the need to have an attorney's opinion about our ordinances versus existing covenants. And we stuck a restriction in there that if you build such a house and accessory units on multiple lots, uh, they have to either have a connecting permanent structure or you have to have deed restrictions on both lots such that they can only be sold as one. Assuming the attorney goes along with that. Yeah. And if somebody wanted to build them, if somebody wanted to build a freestanding garage on their lot that they own next door, they would have to have a they would have to request a conditional use permit and it would have to go through the public hearing process. So it's all probably they never made it. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. um okay. And also if someone in the unit I know that's just protested a, uh they would not approve the conditional use that's permit. been a real contentious area for a long time. <laughs> Some do. Some do. This this is this is more. We're we're, uh, we're stepping across the line a little bit on the uh, trying to be compatible with the covenants under you know because of the um, because there's so many requests for this. Yeah, I know and, that. And without those. If we don't grant those requests, those lots will remain undeveloped for generations, probably. So, so it's like where we can. Well, the, the written, agree to it. We will. I, I mean, this this states that you know you have to have to be owned by. You can't sell them separately, so they will have to stay with. I mean, they would be a a, a, a real estate unit. Uh, so that. That should, at least, I mean, the original purpose of that was people not living in a in a garage. Or leaving a garage standing by itself there after the house sold. Yeah. Or, or building the garage and living in it, never building a house. Yeah, true. <laughs> Did we ever get an answer or something? Somebody on the call, there was a, uh, somebody young had the county uh, put the, their lots in the same plat. I just did you remember that? Yeah, um, I, I think what you're referring to is that we were going to contact the county and make sure that they don't allow somebody to reply. Well, I know we, the reason that came up because they had they had done that. Uh, so uh, nobody's done it since we uh, since we have the zoning ordinance passed. Okay, but 
before that, anything could go we want to we want to make sure that it doesn't happen again going forward. And no, I have not made I contact know. with them. I mean, I mean it, as long as you're putting it that stipulation in there, you have to have the same ownership, and they have to, you can't sell them individually. Then I think that negates the bad part of, of why you know why that is in there. So I, I don't see the problem with it. And we also we consider it developed then. So that may allow ISA to charge a higher assessment. Mm -hmm. okay. We can't tell ISA what to do, but we're going to consider it developed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's up to them. Right. Okay. So that stuff we just talked about is in this section 701, subsection 1 in the R1 description that's up on the screen, and right in the middle where we have this additionally during the process. <clears throat> so it's got to go to a planning commission through a conditional use permit process. And if it's objected to, then we'll deny it. <laughs> that way we don't aren't contradictory to the covenant directly, at least for the unit of property. Well, I'd be interested in if we do get an order uh, an opinion from the attorney of what what we can do there. Definitely, we're going to have to run this by the attorney. Okay, so we covered that. And then accessory uses in the section 14 that needs modification. Actually, there's a few more here in the 702. Linda points out that we need to change um, single family detached to single de single family detached on one lot, and then add the following in the residential uses. Change that table. So we got to do that. And this change also affects section 14 of the, of the ordinance. I thought we were in 7. We were. 701? Well, yeah. We're, related, I, we're passed through that. And because of the changes, we need to change 701, 702, and 14. So she makes a note here that as prescribed in 701, low density residential accessory buildings may be detached and located on an adjoining lot to the principal building. So that sentence has been added to 14. I skipped over it pretty quick, but I'm gonna roll back up to the bottom of that page, just above 701. So we have a clear, we can talk about it. <clears throat> we'll talk about the lot occupied by or intended occupancy by, we added at the end of that, or also to be defined as land occupied only by an accessory building where that building is part of a residence on a separate adjoining lot and the overall structure has been constructed so as to be forever inseparable or the deeds to the lots contain deed restrictions preventing them from being sold separately. That's the language we put in there to, to tie the lots together. Um, And I don't recall. How would we stop that? How do we stop what? How would we stop somebody from doing that? Do not issue a building permit for the accessory building. They're already built. We're, this, these uh, ordinances we're passing can't fix the past. They're not retroactive. No. They are no unconforming structures. I know, but if, the, if they build them five years later, that they want to sell the lot with the separate building on, how are you going to stop them? You can't. That's what I thought. <laughs> Only way you can stop them is if it burns down and they want to rebuild it. I said you put a restriction on the on the deed, but I, I, can we do that? This is this is for moving forward. If I want to do this next week, I have to have a restrictive have covenant in my deed. We have to live with the past. Under our ordinances, they're non-conforming. So if something happens to the accessory unit, they cannot necessarily rebuild unless it's the adjoining lot. They could under this ordinance. No, that is. That is one of the big questions that we have to. I don't know ask. how you're going to stop them from doing it. Yeah, well, that's that's what we have to find out. First of all, we have to find out from an attorney if you can whether or not we can put a impose on deed. deed restrictions. And secondly, if the person agrees to put the deed restriction on their property initially, how do you prevent them from removing that deed restriction? In the future, 
don't know. I don't see how you know if none of that if none of that is possible, then all of this is just wasted effort. Wasted effort. Exactly. I'm I'm hoping that in that restriction they can name the city as a party to it. Yeah, we could they could stay that Okay, so okay, so, so this is all dependent on whether we can get it restricted be so, so what we've done yeah, we've drafted language we'd, we'd like to propose, and we're going to ask the attorney's opinion on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, Linda, can you uh, help me yeah, find it where we say the adjoining lot is where they share, share the same street frontage? Yeah. Um, I think that's important it's, it's too. It's lot that's on the first page. I say somebody will figure that out. Do you other way? No. Oh yeah, it's right before I started reading, having its principal frontage upon the street. Okay. So we're talking about adjoining lots that share the same street frontage. Unlike the situation that I have where my lots are behind my house, they have a different street. Any other thoughts? What are we at? 1401? That's kind of where we're left off, yeah. Okay. I have a comment. I'm lost. Law school. I'm lost too. Law school. I didn't say lost. <laughs> Okay, if we moved outdoor storage then, section 1660. I added, we added, not I, I put into the text for today's consideration that we had a lot of discussion, the three of us, about what this covers. And Ken had recommended initially that it covers sections or storage in C2 and light industrial. I had made the comment, I thought it ought to cover all commercials. So that's what we talked about at length. At the end of that conversation, probably half an hour's worth, we decided that it would probably be correct, as Ken's proposed, C2 and IL only. So that all commercial zones are subject to the shielding of whatever. Just well, the other ones don't allow us to go to storage. So. Okay. And then this text that I put in red, Ken had asked me about this information is referring to in the, the text we were modeling it from, that 153.212. And I copied in that text from that section, so it would be part of this so that's what specific, yeah, yeah in, the, in the red there. Yeah. That's what the text in 153.212 says, other than my changes for planning official and corner site triangle. We call it an R ordinance or corner site triangle. We talked a little bit about that in 2B, existing vegetation would include the fencing and walls. We, it. we didn't uh, make any major changes to it, Ken. Anything else you had in hindsight? Yeah. Did you have anything else to add in hindsight? No, after? I, I looked at it three times. So okay. Now. So I have some things in what we talked about we need to do. We need to define the eyesores and what types of uses that need to be shielded from view. Chicken coops, or are they called accessory buildings? <laughs> I think they are. Should they be shielded from you? Well, we're talking about outdoor outdoor storage. This is this is this is different. We're not in commercial. commercial. This is oh, commercial. Okay, my bad. Mm -hmm. And that's if you're going to have a chicken farm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Tyson came over here. Okay. Well, we 
not eyesore. Where is eyesore? Right? Where, I, where it's in my notes at the bottom. I, I know, but I mean, there, I thought it was directly Oh, well, our discussion was, you know, what what's an eyesore? Uh, well, I'm Dan worried. Dan said if a guy had a plumbing business and he had nice neat racks filled with different sized pipe and they were and the, the parking lot was arranged nicely, it wasn't an eyesore to him. The next person going down the road says, I don't want to see pipe. Is that an eyesore? I, I was trying to see where eyesore was used. It's not place. used. It's Let's not. talk about what are we trying to shield? We're, we're, we're just, we're going to have to take leave it kind of general, like anything incompatible with the immediate surroundings. I mean, I, I don't think any, there's a legal definition of eyesore that I've ever seen. And it's such a judgment call. I mean, I might, you know. Well, I thought the, the vegetation in this in the stuff is going to obscure what's stored. So, what, what well, then it's not an eyesore if you can't see it. Right. We're trying to define eyesores. Well, well, I know, but if, if, if we're not, and an eyesore is something eyesore. that's incompatible with well, whatever the, the text it says, consider the text. To me, that that those are eyesores. Yeah, but those are examples. That's not a definition that we can. Well, it's a de definition that we say. Well, you can't include. Uh, if, if you're going to have that, I think you have to have a definition and then examples of. Okay. You can't have just an example of as a definition. But I, 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 I guarantee you, I can walk <laughs> and walk and drive you to some places up there. Uh, and Sunfest and what all were there, pallets and uh, all sorts of crap behind there. Yeah. Well, there's no nothing obscuring it. There wasn't no wide open. So you're not supposed to be behind. So that's stuff. that's the conversation. I mean, that's I, that's the whole dilemma we've got. Right. Yeah. The first sentence it opens with all permitted outdoor storage of material and equipment within C two and light industrial. I'm suggesting maybe we want to put some examples in there that is not limited to. But if you have something obscuring the, the view of these items, how are they going to be? Well, it's not an eyesore if you can't see it from where the public would normally. But that, we don't have to worry about that. I don't think an eyesore, by definition, is something you can see. Well, the, okay. I think the, the question is. Whether or not the the uh, the barrier, vegetative barrier, or whatever screening, is uh, going to be required for everything. You know, like if I'm if I uh, if I sell ATVs and I you know I have an inventory of twenty of them and I have them sitting out in front of my store, do I have to? But, you know, do I have to obscure that from view I would, because I'm storing my equipment? I wouldn't think so, but that's kind of what I was getting at. If we come up with a definition that includes incompatibility with the local surrounding, five ATVs in the front yard of the grocery store may be incompatible, but a bunch of Christmas trees that they're selling for Christmas is not incompatible what about, in that setting. What about a dozen? Dozen U Haul trucks in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it says the outdoor display. Well, she's the if it's a U Haul dealership, I mean, it, I, mean I, don't, I don't know the answer. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's going to vary with what you're talking about. You yeah. have to have a general, generic definition of some kind. It yeah. has to include compatibility with that very local. Well, it excludes out this, your TV thing. It says the outdoor. Display of materials solely for retail sale or lease, such as outdoor equipment or other is not included. What does? Where is that? What are you reading? I'm reading six. D6. Okay, so I hadn't got to six yet. D6. I'm still working well, on it. We're talking about eyesores. I don't see. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so the stuff that's the stuff that they're trying to sell or lease is not. Considered outdoor storage. It's right. the things that they if use. I, if I leave it there permanently. Well, you got one not right now, but it, those are outdoor yeah, things. Maybe you just got the, that whatever it is. Too hot. They're outdoor things that have to be outdoors. 
You're well, not going to put a U-Haul truck inside of. Except, I, I, you know, I don't know how often you go there, but there are display racks left outside empty. Uh, that might be an issue, but it seems like U-Haul trucks would not be if she lives there. Well, it, it, it said you would exclude automobiles, so farm supplies, I don't know. Anyway. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, what's the deal about corn? You don't think to find it, but you know it when you see it. Well, well, that's, that's, you know what, that's, that's, kind of, that's what, I, what I mean by we have to have a generic thing. If you're a car dealership and you have cars out there, that's a their job. If you have if something else, it, it's not compatible uh, with that. Particular, but I don't know how you're going to define that. You see, that that's my problem with those U-Hauls. Is that to me, that's not compatible with anything. Uh, um, that's a separate business, from the, whatever that other one is. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, anything that's not intrusive, by whose definition? <laughs> Let's put that in there. Whatever Ken Mills said. That's, I don't like that. I don't. I don't know how you're going to define. I don't either. It's going to have to be. Um, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that, that that you you've excluded things that you say are not. You know, are he's not, not excluding. He's just giving examples of what could be considered an eyesore. Which must be screened if a nest if a necessary requirement of the business. So I got to have this stuff to conduct my business. It's not for sale or lease. And so think about any kind of a business, they all have stuff. Um, it must be screened if necessary. And we, like I said, we've tried to list things that are probably unpleasant to look at. The example I used in the last workshop that meeting was a small engine repair shop that's got yeah, 45 or 50 broken down lawnmowers sitting out in front of their shop, um, you know, in various states of disrepair. Um, that to me is an eyesore. Um, but if they were 25 brand new lawnmowers lined up nice, you know, for with the sale with the price tags on them. That's not an eyesore. Well, how do you put that in an ordinance? I, how do you put that in words that isn't ambiguous? To the point where, I mean, we're just gonna have to come up with a, say a generic definition and then some examples and leave it. I, I, there's no way we're gonna define this so precisely that it's gonna work. One thing I can suggest, except for the additions, they were extracted from an ordinance that's in place in a community not far from us. I, I don't know. I, 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 it's Jerry's point. Well, nobody can define the one that you already can see it, and I don't, I don't know how to define something like that. We're just going to have to come up with something that. I think we just have to leave it generic, like something inappropriate for that specific location, and then give a few examples. I want to know that we can do better than that, because I don't know how we would define that. Well, that, if you say inappropriate for that location, if, well, we're, if we're talking about uh, lawnmowers that are in various states of disrepair that are waiting their turn in line, well, well, we've got we've got the uh, you know, wood automotive there on the, uh -huh. yeah. and, and what you know you had transmissions laying out in the parking lot. Yeah, and, and, yeah but if he's got cars there waiting to be well, repaired, you go, if you go behind SunTest, there's all kinds of stuff back there. But that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's, you can't. That's not screen uh, houses. Uh, if, if, no. if, house. if you're going into the blocks, I mean, unless you're blind in one eye. You're going to see that crap. Well, but what I'm saying, though, if, if they had the landscaping there to shield that view, then it wouldn't be a problem. I, I'm, agree, I'm agreeing with that. To me, that's an eyesore. Yeah. But You're right. You can see it. I don't know if you call that a public right of way, that street going in. Yeah. yeah. But I guess. One going into the, the Bluffs is, yeah. Goes right by it. Yeah. 
bathroom and look at right or you go into the gloves. It's about all they could do. Is it I, I just left. Oh, or clean the crap up. <laughs> you know, and, anyway. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to use a, a, a way off the wall example here. But I remember back from sexual harassment training when I was running manufacturing plants, they defined sexual harassment as something that a, a, re, a reasonable person would consider to be harassing. Yes. So maybe yes, we so need to say what I'm thinking. that, you know, um, something that a reasonable person, a reasonable person would, consider would consider inappropriate for the location. Uh, that may, uh, there, that's as you, close you as can't get, You can't get definite. No, you can't. There's, There's no, no way, way you can get But you can just for the yeah. guidance. Yeah. You could put some examples. Yeah, yeah. Put some examples yeah. after we give a yeah. definition. Yeah. But the reasonable is about as close as we're going to get. And what that is, I don't know. It would be a little different for different people, but at least we have something. And if it's so outrageous, then it's obvious it's not reasonable. That's, I mean, that's. What where, are you, where are you going to put that in there? What is it? You gonna put it under D? Now, now you made me close it down. Because you said the outdoor display of it fits under D. Fits wherever you had it. But we already we already defined up there. It says it's all right. Oh. Somebody want to try to pan out what we're talking about? Maybe we need to look at the section that defines permitted outdoor storage. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it would seem like, you know, paragraph A is the one that needs modification because they're not making any exceptions it says all outdoor storage and that's why i put the note at the bottom to consider a change to that yeah well, like paragraph b when it says outdoor storage uses right there in the first sentence sounds like those are probably the permitted outdoor storage uses would you think Have some restrictions on outdoor storage, don't they? Is there zoning rules? We don't. That's what this section is. We stick with it. Well, then, how do you we, know what permitted outdoor storage is in the first line of A? Well, we'd have to have a definition someplace. Yeah, that, that's why I was looking on that site where I got these other definitions. What can we define storage to be what permitted storage is? I think we need that. Yeah. I'm not going to get up and think a minute. So is that our takeaway that we need to define what outdoor storage is permitted, or so. or at least see if it's all if it's not already defined someplace else in the ordinance? I think the only place we have any talking about storage and stuff outdoors is in the nuisance ordinance. Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, abandoned vehicles and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So well, we need one, to add a section in here for permitted outdoor storage. Well, and it's going to be one of those, you know, um, such as, but not, you know, limited to. What? So like, we'll just take A and put a sub 100 and define it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's, in the first place, you, you want to restrict it to things that are necessary for conducting the business. Mm -hmm. 
um, in our comments that we had last time we got together, the um, guy who's selling tires, he has a pile of used tires and he's conducting his business by accumulating them until he gets a truckload so he can sell them. Right. So we're suggesting that that's not for sale. We're suggesting that probably should be shielded. Yeah. Well, it has to be shielded. Research on that too. Somebody will. And then who's section? This is Mills. Mr. Mills can come up with a definition. It should. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. It's your document. Your suggestion. Okay. Wordsmith that. Hmm? You can wordsmith that. Defining sexual harassment. We're, we're saying all, all, all outdoor storage is going to be streamed from the public. Except for that section where it says in six. If, if it's items for sale. Yeah. yeah, except for D6 items for sale or lease. Okay. In science, Jerry said he's still working on that text, so we're going to skip that out. Let, let, let me make just a couple of comments. Okay. Uh, the research I've done uh, was actually a case of uh, on social media now, people uh, railing about a sign in disrepair. Uh, so that was one of the things that I'm looking at. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, approval of the signs, commercial signs. In, in the council I was on in Oklahoma, the business I owned, I had to take it to uh, our uh, development director, but a copy of what the signage size, the color, the, the, I don't want to get that specific. I've done some pretty sound I think, sizes. I think like uh, Pat suggests, leave it open. That it needs the approval of the such and such a person or board and leave it at that. And that could lead to the conversation of, I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, yeah, we, I don't know how to do things other than just want to do what Santa Fe, New Mexico does. You just don't allow them at all. If you haven't been there, it's really nice because they have nothing bigger than about that. But that, 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 that big sign at, at the uh, shopping center up there that's been just the frame. Oh, the everything off of it. Yeah, and uh, there's discussion of who's responsible for enforcing that, which I assume would be the city. And, uh, I don't know. So we don't have more than that. Oh, that was my question. Yeah. Um, and I, I have one that showed up in our in our neighborhood, if you will, right on the corner of um, Shields and uh, right at the Eagle. Someone placed a sign right there. We'll buy your lot. A little two by two red sign. Uh -huh. Stick right underneath our flag. So, really? Yeah. So you just go down and you take that. The wind's away. blowing it over. I don't know if it's on city property, if it's on personal property, but it's certainly not related to the business of Table Rock Landing. And well, some other signs have been I seen said, on Holiday Island Drive. Drive. We'll buy homes for cash. Yeah. 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 Phone number. That, you know, that, that's another issue with these hand drawn signs. Uh, it's really eyesore. Let's not get back to eyesore. <laughs> we don't know what that is. But anyway, but I, I'll, I'll have something soon. I do have one other comment on the signage you, we were talking about. If it's something for sale, you can have it outside, displayed outside. Uh, I think we ought to have restrictions on where outside it can be displayed or how much of the parking lot it well, can take up. You have to leave spaces for a required number of actual parking spaces for your place of business. Uh, so it can't take over the whole parking lot. 
So that should be a consideration as well. Shouldn't look like an outdoor flea market. Exactly. And, and perhaps, I don't know whether you could say uh, if you've got, you know, it, it can take no more than so much of the parking lot, um, or maybe it, you could use a space outside that is some percentage of your inside store space or something of it could be outside and played outside or 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 on a rotating basis or something like that. But to have, have all of your business sitting out, you can have a little tiny, teeny tiny space on the inside and put everything else outside and then cram it in overnight, well, you know? Can you not just say, uh, out there, if you're worried about taking space, you can't, you cannot reduce your required parking as found in section 21. Exactly. By any signage. That's what I was thinking. But I mean, that may be kind of simple. Yeah. Because the only thing it's going to do is run out the other place. By signing door by displaying yeah. merchandise. Yeah, it doesn't. Temporary or otherwise, you cannot reduce your required parking under Section 21 by any signage you put up. <clears throat> because Section 21 goes through all that so many per square foot, exactly. so many per parking. I think it does. It's been a long time since I looked at it, but I think it does. Jerry's not here to hear that anyway. We're not doing anything I'm signing it, are we? No. No. But uh, well, I do Jerry have wanted some comments. I do have a couple comments for Jerry when he gets back on signing so yeah. a couple things that I would like to see. Well, I you know, I, I know the 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 wannabes or whatever they are uh, have, have been having a lot of fun with that big sign up on Oh, Jerry did. Uh well city city has nothing. Responsibility for that. I don't know whose land that's on. That's on Tom Beast's property, but I don't know who uh, originally, but what, who, bought, who, who owns it now? I don't know. But we're, we're, that great big sign that was up there at the entrance to the market area, and, uh, on, and they used to have the. Oh, I, must be a, I must drive around. I'm oblivious. Well, it's a huge right. sign. It's bigger than that. I mean, it's a huge, big white sign. I don't doubt it. I just don't. Care. I don't. It uh, might be Robert Evans, or it might be someone he sold it to. Um, I think Tom still owns that. I don't know. The medical. I think if you look on, yeah, oh, it's out. It's, it's out in front of you know medical Bush clinics. It was out in front of Boucher's or something like that. But that's oh. been Tom's. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's out in front of Boucher's old office. One of his businesses. Okay. Pretty uh, sure. But regardless, um, you know. When we have a sign, a sign ordinance, we can take have care. them either take take it down totally or put a, a blank lens in it. Uh, you know, to uh, so at least it doesn't look bad for now. There's there's another one down at the bottom of the hill. There, how did that even how they get under to start looking pretty bad? But he, I thought. Burn when he was talking about signs, that, you know, if we, if we don't want to do that for Holland Street, it's uh, well, the, down the, hill, the, down the, the hill over 180, just after we turn off the 187, you go on up the hill, there's a big sign that says at Holiday Island, all utilities, 4,000 lots or something. I don't know, know anybody has a clue. It's a billboard and it's all in the city limits. Yeah. It isn't our problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as sooner or later, it will be. Not if it's outside the city limits. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> we can move forward a little bit, then we're going to pull back when yeah. Jerry comes back. So in 2101 Off Street Parking, um, uh, Mr. Elwood supplied this and Mr. made it. Elwood, we can get after you. The yellow, yellow, get after me because I'm terrible with the computer. The yellow highlights are words that we added, like planning official in 2B. And I did some cleaning up of the formatting so it's easier to read. We talked about needing to add a section in this for short-term rentals. Okay. So that's on page two of the document. Short-term rentals, okay. Uh -huh. So we're, we're talking about the off-street parking and loading, and this is all my creation, uh, just so we have it for discussion, of what parking we should have for a short-term rental. 
And I thought maybe four per dwelling unit. I took that lead because that's what we have for a single family detached. And then plus one space per bedroom. I took that lead from uh, Manufactured Housing Park has that. And Funeral Home has a plus one per employee. Hotels Motel plus one per 10 guest rooms. So talking about short-term rentals, thinking there's probably maybe multiple families coming to this rental, so we need to make sure they have some space for them to park. Two spaces maybe within the garage, that text comes from the single family resident detached. You got, you got a problem there with that minimum driveway length. And why do we have a problem? We talked about that, what's your opinion? Well, because they, they granted so many variances and road the garages are not 25 feet from the road. Okay, what about the future? Do we want to say this in the future? Well, it's all in the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the whole point. It's all in the future. Right. Um, that, there's a yeah. lot of them short. Except for, in our ordinance says, and unless the topography doesn't lend itself. Unless you uh, grant a variance. Then right. Yeah. Okay. For a topography problem. Okay. Okay. And in this case, someone might come to us and say, I need to have a a variance on this 25 feet because my house is only 12 feet from the street edge. You're, am I misunderstanding? You said four per dwelling unit plus one space per bedroom? Yes, sir. So, so if, I have have a four four, if I have a four bedroom house, you have to have five parking spaces. Oh, my well, that I would read eight. 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 <laughs> that's the way I'm, that's what I, that's my question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So I don't think you need plus. Oh, well, okay, yeah, let's have eight parking spaces for short-term rental. Why not? Well, for one space per bedroom over the first four. Well, greater than four? Greater than four. Like if it's five yeah, If that's what you want, yeah. And you'd have to have, 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 to have five, five space. space. What about just one space per bedroom unit of the house? Well, dwelling yeah. unit is the house, I think. Just the house. That's what it's Maybe one per bedroom works. These that's what these I'm houses saying, that have six bedrooms, they have six spaces. Enough. If you got two right. bedrooms, that's two spaces, three, one four, room. whatever you've got. Is that not sufficient? Well, like I said, I copied it from a single family dwelling, which is four. Uh, duplex, we have two per unit, so that's probably bed and breakfast. So you could just say, well, what about, what about or? Plus four places per dwelling unit or one space per bedroom. Oh. It's already here. I just saw a bed and breakfast. Isn't that short-term rental? Yeah. That's it's on a, page one. Kind of it says two per bed, two per building, plus one per guest room. Where did you see that? That's yeah. the definition under civic and commercial uses. Okay. I thought, well, two per building. Where is no bed per two per building plus one? Yeah. A bed and breakfast is different in that it has to have someone there coming to at least provide breakfast. Bed and breakfast is different. It might short have term rental. In there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But does that definition work for short term rentals? Yeah, I think so. Two too. per building plus one per guest room. That would work. Or well, one not per not. bedroom. I was thinking per guest room. Four, 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 one per well, you're going to have some, you're going to have some five bedroom houses. Well, then you want. Which you'd have to have seven. Spaces. Yes, you have to have seven spaces. That's going to be tough. That's mm -hmm. too many. Mm -hmm. I, I, what, what, it's not one per, how, how many people rent a short-term thing with more cars than there are bedrooms? Well, well you can say two, two per dwelling unit plus one for each bedroom. Take your bedroom over. I, I, over I was thinking that we could just have one four, per four or one per bedroom. Because then if you have five bedrooms, that'd be five spaces. If you have three bedrooms or two bedrooms, that'd be four spaces. That's or right. rather than an and. Well, if it's or, they could get by with four on a five bedroom house. No. Oh, I see what, yeah. I want to put it or such that if it's more than. No, I know that's what you say, you yeah. That's or what I'm or. saying. I'm not saying it very well. I've been gone. My brain's not. Yeah, the way he said it first would be that if you have five bedrooms, you'd have to have five spaces. Right. That was more for you or one, whichever's greater. Right. Well, we want to put that in the simplest. Say, say whichever's greater. One, no. four, per, four per dwelling or one per bedroom, whichever is greater. 
So if you had five, then you'd have to have five. So the minimum would be four. Well, I, I, I'm going to say I'm against that one too because we do have some properties out here which only um, only are two bedroom. So. So why do we have to have four spaces? Uh, yeah, for I, two I, I'm not place. so sure that we can't just get by with one per bedroom. One bedroom place, one spot. Two bedroom place, two spots. Whatever it is, I would that not I, just I, work? I don't know what Pat said there. Because how many people are going to go? I mean, if it does, how many people are going to rent a, a one bedroom place and have two cars? And I, I know of several two bedroom places that are on. It depends on the stuff. But I don't want to hear about your two spaces for parking. <laughs> okay. uh, these are, these are, these yeah, are, but the the problem is is that they will rent that place to people that come with six cars. Or eight or ten cars. Well, yeah, mom and dad and two, two college students. There's more cars. And uh, so, what, where are they going to go with the rest of the cars? Up and down the street. And they can only have as many cars as there are parking spaces. And we're suggesting in this ordinance how many spaces they have to have. Yeah, but, uh, so, we're, we're going to have another ordinance somewhere that says that you're re restricted. Well, you get these by by you're restricted in how many people can rent your short term rental by the, rental number, of by the number of parking spaces. parking spaces and the number of bedrooms. Well, you got you got an awful lot of short term rentals that are you don't well, want ten two bedrooms. bedrooms. Uh, uh, all those yeah, I I agree. I'm more yeah I'm I'm as much interested in in um, preventing you know properties from being rented to fraternities that come with you know 15 cars. It also helps those those people who are renting have prevents destruction of their property too. Um, uh, what about what about one per bedroom with a minimum of two? Two spots. Mm -hmm. I think that would work. That way, you know, it's a one bedroom place, and still have to have two spots. Over that, it's well. I don't think is there a better way to word it? I think. I think that's a good way to word it. Very simple too. I say a minimum of two, with, and then two plus one for each additional bedroom. When I own this condo down here. Uh, Damon Hinkson was the manager of the landlord for the rent. He worked out a deal with Tyson for everybody that's in that unit in that those four condos got two spots, one gate, eight spots. But the key range with Tyson is to get temporary permits to park in the uh, trailer parking lot down. Probably work in so then you could. Well, that's up to the union. I don't want to get anything that involves high city. You know, that's yeah, they want to make it up to the union. They can. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the city doing it, it would be that. Uh, yeah, but we don't want that in our. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't want to say that anything that involves high city. I still think that, that uh, one per bedroom with a minimum of two is as close as we can get. I think that's two for one bedroom, two for two bedroom, three for a three bedroom, four for a four bedroom, whatever it is. And if they have more cars than that, that's their problem. That's something that I mean. No, it becomes it becomes the city's problem and the neighbor's problem. And that's what's going on right now. That's about the only problem we have right now from short term rentals is the fact that that um, no, but if we four guys that like to go fishing rent a house and they all come with their pickup truck and their boat trailer, <laughs> so you got four pickup trucks and four boats in front of one little house. I know, but if you put the one boat and one truck fits in the driveway, the rest of them are parked up along the, the street, well, they're, um, they're not violent. blocking traffic. They're not following the ordinance about can... new construction. I mean, you're not going to fit every. I mean, I mean that's why you're setting this up is to show restrictions. You're saying you can have two plus one for each bedroom. 
they have a boat and a trailer, they need to put it over another right. place to park one of them. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else we're going to do. We can't require people to have eight parking spots in front of them or something like what's right out that window. No, I think the, I think the key is like, like Linda was leading us in to, and that's that um, there has to be some restriction on how many people that can rent a particular property to. And I know that when, you know, right now, when you look at VRBOs and stuff like that, a lot of them will say 12 occupants max or something like that. Well, and I, I think, yeah, I agree. That should, but should that be in the parking ordinance or parking section? It's gotta be someplace else where we have an occupancy limit. You're not going to cover everything. The only thing you can do is we're just going to have to get something close, and, and then the well, has to be changed. I mean, later. you know, I did all of that study. And just about every one of those that I looked at have been you know, revisited. This uh, Fayetteville, I think it was this past week, coming up with a new set of rules. And, um, oh yeah, but you got to get something established before we can revisit it. What we have to work on, get it down, and then figure out where we made the mistakes. Well, we're, not, we're, we're, we're Jerry is leading us in the right direction to have a, a ordinance covering short-term rentals, and yeah. it'll have some restrictions and how they do business and what have you, what they have to do. And they're going to have to have a business license, and that's mm -hmm. where we get their agreement to follow the rules, and we'll hold them accountable with, through an ordinance that we can cite them, find them, whatever, if they violate it. So May I suggest know. then that we go two per dwelling unit or one space per bedroom, whichever is greater. Right. Yeah. I'll vote for that. Or one space per bedroom with a minimum of two per unit, whichever way is easier to word. Well, I, I took the lead from the text that's okay. No, no, I, whichever way college or university, it doesn't matter, it says the same thing two per dwelling unit or one, one space per bedroom, whichever is common, whichever is greater. I like that. No, that works even that's easy to read. Okay, yep. I mean, it, 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 it's not going to cover everything, so I mean, it, it's a guide. Fine, and, 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 and if it gets to be a problem, then you have an ordinance that you can enforce and you can cite them. Okay. Oh, that was and then we had text down in section four, paragraphs B, C, and E that, that we read the text over and over again and couldn't come up with what I don't think Mr. I, Pat intended. You know, I wish I could remember what I intended. I think I intended okay. more. Uh, where did I put it? Where are we at? Where, where I'm We're here. on four. It's the, yeah. Uh, with what I really agree to say is park, yeah. you know, off, off street parking cannot be such that it would interfere with any public right of way. We that don't have intent. a road that has public park right enough for public park. Parking. No, no, off street parking. But you can't interfere with on street right of way. That's what the okay. ordinance is. Off street should be right within the road. Off street should be private. That's just scratch that whole thing because that doesn't make any sense <laughs> after I read it again. There's no <laughs> sense whatsoever and I wrote it. But I, I was probably drinking too much coffee. You're gonna, that day. You're, gonna, you're gonna redraft that one. Yeah, let me just redraft B. Okay. Because it does not make any sense. And C. All right. Because that's we're not gonna take the section on entirely, you're just gonna fix it. Yeah, I'll fix it. You were drinking too much coffee at the time, you say. I I spent so many hours just getting for some reason or another my version of Word and what he sent me aren't very compatible. So I spent more time re- getting it into my computer so that I can work with it than I did working on it. And the yellow, okay, that's fine. And forget E2, and I'll just redo that. And E also? E. All right. That E doesn't make sense either. <laughs> that's, that's, why just said. Said. that's why I just you said that. I thought you said the B and C. You said. No, <laughs> I did. Yeah, B, C, and E. Okay, I'll leave right. BC. I agree with you, sir. Thank you. We'll let you do well, this. I'm going to write that down. It's right over there. Okay, here. we're sliding down to section N of that same. 
does that this is this is still on short term rentals? No, no. Oh, that, oh, okay. We're on parking. In general, anywhere. Yeah. Off, off, street. off street parking is parking. Well, off off the street. I thought this this house up here on the top of the hill that we'd warned them before about blocking the street. We 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 monitor that and they had Oh, they they eight or ten have any, cars and four or five. I don't have any enforcement, so we can. Yeah. Yeah, our nuisance ordinance covers that right now. So you can't park on the. Well, I, I thought street. I thought David went. If they him. if they have the the uh, traffic lanes totally blocked, <coughs> then they've been told a few times already that they have to have traffic control out there. And when they were unloading a semi load of drywall last week, one day they did have people out there. They did okay. directing uh, traffic. Well, I'm, I'm just talking about stationary. Now, when they yeah. when their workers show up for you know to to work, and they pull mostly but not totally off of the road and park, we've we've not been forcing that. At least today, I found I didn't have to go over the center line to get down the road. Yeah, somebody must have moved because I did. You did? And I, you know, and that, as Ken said, there's no right of way there. I mean, it's just, you can't get a full size pickup without going off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you put in a zip line. They, they, uh, Two or three weeks ago, they nearly lost a uh, a crane off the cliff that they had behind the house. That is cool. Yeah, we do have some that lots here that are building. I don't know. I don't know what those people are trying to do there. But where are we at? We're in N. We're in uh, four N. What I meant to say in there, I can tell you. Okay. Because I wrote it. In my I don't know why I wrote it there. It says, Local common practice because I can't find anything that would uh, have anything to do with uh, compaction of stone. But are required parking on Canadian Island. But we don't have construct city construction standards for that, so we can't have that in there. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was my concern. When it says city construction yeah. standards, I don't have that. I, were. I, I wrote local common practice, but I don't know if that's too. That would, that would not be good. Well, what would, what, I don't know what would be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's whose practice? Uh, and it's all required parking. And, um, I'll just, we're just, sure, tonight, so we're just talking about. Is there, is there a state or federal standard that defines what subgrade is? What? An SB2 standard? I, I took it. There may be. I didn't see any. Do you know? Oh, I guess nobody knows. <laughs> I didn't see any. I thought maybe Don had some words for me, but I didn't see any, but there could be. I couldn't find any. And I know we don't have a similar state. state. All our how about if we just end it with compacted period? Just that's fine. Um I mean all the or I mean all the building things we use are, are according to the state statute. State standards or whatever. Well, I, I can relook at that, see if I can find it. Yeah, why don't we just sit with more of a common compaction, whatever that is? Just say shall be compacted, period. Yeah. You That's can say fine. any any pertinent or uh, state standards, any There's other ones referred to? The building codes are all based on state, state standards. That's pretty vague. Yeah. So it just says if there are state standards, you better be following. Okay. I don't know. That's what we put in the liquor ordinance. This something this, like that. Well, it's a storm that does not uh, uh, not supersede not any state statute or uh, code. Well, all we're all we're trying to say in section N is that if the store is ready to open, but it won't quit raining, so we can't pave the parking lot, 
we're going to issue a temporary permit to park on the on the gravel, you know, until it quits raining, so they can pour the concrete. Is that what we're trying to say there? I think so. Yeah, I think something like that. So I change it to with the Arkansas State Construction Standards, or we'll just leave it with compacted. I think leave it with it. Yeah. There is a end of there. Shoving a factor compaction test, but I don't want to get into that because I don't know if it applies. So maybe rose proof, which literally. No, I would leave I'm, it there. I'm kind of thinking that that's unnecessary clutter in our. That whole section is unnecessary clutter. All of the end. All of the end, I mean. Yeah, so all of in. I can't I can't imagine a situation where that would become a concern for the city of Valley Island in the next hundred years. Well it has it's applicable to the city you gotta do that before you can get a building plan and talk to the city. Well, I mean, I mean, you could, what is it? You could well, just, uh, wait, wait, give wait. a certificate of occupancy. What, in, uh, what if in, because we're talking about off street parking, and we talked about a guy needs to put in 25 parking spaces, and he's putting in a parking lot, and he doesn't pave it, it just stays perpetually gravel. And we said it has to be hard surfaced. Without this section, we have no teeth. To say get the hard surfacing done. Yeah, that's that's the intent of this this paragraph of the ones we No, they don't hard surface it ever. They don't get a permit to use their building ever. Okay, so you're saying it's unnecessary because of the inclement weather thing. Yeah, I mean this it, it's in there for a specific short term what if Problem. kind okay. of thing. Okay. That's right. That I think is going to be, but I, I, I can tell you where, where I'm coming from. If our ordinances get so long winded that it's almost impossible to find out, to find the important stuff when you're looking to address somebody's question, then um, yeah. nobody's going to, either nobody's going to use the ordinances or I don't think it's we'll necessary. have to hire more people to uh, to answer questions when people call on, on the phone and say, I've, I've, I've read your, you know, I've spent three days reading your ordinance wow. and I can't find an answer to my simple question. So, uh, so you got to, you know, you got to tell me. And then somebody in, in the office here is going to have to you know, also spend time reading, you know, and you can't, you know, I'm never going to be so much of an expert on our zoning ordinances that I'll know that section N, I don't even have to worry about it because it's such a rare situation that I don't need to worry about it. I still have to read it to see if it applies to the question that I'm being presented. We can shorten it, shorten it. I mean, error to the error to the. Well, it says less is better. I mean, you do it strictly in any process. Now, I, I can understand the need to have an ordinance that stands the test of time, so that you know every year we're not um, you know adding to our ordinances because we're growing a little bit and new situations have come up. By the same token, if if it's so unlikely that it's ever going to be an issue, why put it in the ordinance at all? Just leave it out. It's just clutter. If a need comes up in the future, there's something we can revisit and put back in. I'm okay with taking it out. Another, you ready? Taking it out. 
whole yeah, that whole in the whole sentence, the whole paragraph. Okay. It's a very restrictive. Yeah, I, I just don't think it is. It's applicable to a very restrictive. And I, it's just highly unlikely that it's going to come up. All such as well, all you, can, you can regulate it by not giving them the building. And next year at this time when we're sitting here talking about putting it back in, yeah, but you can I'll be apologize to everybody. No, you can control no, it. Just, I, next year I'm going to have forgotten by issuing the new building. Yeah, I, that's what I think. I think the control is there. You don't right. issue an occupancy but you don't permit think we need for a business license. Is that uh, uh, the definition of a temporary certificate? Of the, the, the 20, well, 20, that. Day, uh, 120 days it needs to be hard service. Okay. I would can, bet there is another you can control that with temporary the certificate. I don't, I don't think we need it in there now. Now, the, if, if somebody's going to build a building, a commercial building, they're going to come, they're going to get a building permit. The building permit is going to say, that you know the construction plans are going to say that it's got this paved parking lot that has the correct number of spaces. If they never pave it, then they don't get a business license and they don't get an occupancy permit. Well, sorry, uh, but say, so it's just up to uh, the planning commission or the building inspector to the the building revoke inspector. that temporary. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I I don't see I don't see the the need to give somebody a temporary something. I mean, what the job's not done until until it's done. That's right. So you would okay because there was a discussion of letting them do that so they can open for business. I don't I don't see why we would do that. Yeah. I like that approach. It's it's either done or it's not. Yeah. Well, you don't have a parking lot. How can you open a business? Because you put on gravel compacted. Yeah, uh, compacted gravel. They ain't gonna like it. <laughs> I, 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 I think we can get by without it. If it comes up, we'll deal with it. Yeah. I, I, I marked it to disregard it. I mean, I mean, kind of set something up that will cover everything that might ever happen. Okay, section O. Um, we had the words in loading spaces, so it made sense. And we talked about the need that these vehicles need to be licensed, they're not just parked there. And also adding the word inoperable. In that list, though, it includes boats, motorhomes, and campers. And I made a note about limiting that because section seven that's on the next page says what you can do with your boat, trailers, and recreational vehicles. So, in my mind, these are a bit contradictory. We've got Section O, the and use of off street I, parking loading spaces shall not be used spaces. for the storage of boats, motors, homes, and campers. And Section 7 is outdoor storage of boats, trailers, and recreational vehicles. So, you got you got two things. You got parking and you got loading spaces, and they're both they're, they're different. You don't use loading spaces for parking. Uh, off street parking means in your yard. Mm -hmm. In your driveway. If it didn't say loading spaces, then I I would go along with what. There, but I don't loading spaces are not. Uh, and I guess the we, staging area would be different. Could we take that whole last part of that out though, where it says not operable, not operable to not be used for dead storage of any vehicle or trailer? Well, the designated staging area and the loading space or parking is not the same damn thing. In uh, inoperable vehicles is covered in the nuisance ordinance, but I, I agree with the man that we probably should take boats, motorhomes, and campers out of this out of O. Out of O, because we covered.
cover it in 2007. The cover it in seven. <laughs> what did you just say? It was used solely for the parking of licensed motor vehicles, not for air conditioning. Boom. <coughs> You're done. Yeah, is that just don't need both? It actually says the opposite. I mean, you're talking about options. <laughs> Improve the off street parking spaces. Well, like a parking lot up at SunFest or something, is that in the market area? Is that off street? Yeah, off street, that's what we got. Park or off street parking, 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 parking or loading spaces should be used solely for license. Do we mean anything after that at all? No. If, if, if we're saying it has to be only used for this, then why put the things that it can't be used for? Yeah. I mean, off street parking is for license. Vehicles yeah. in an operating condition. Boom. Stop there because the rest of it is, I mean, yeah. I, I tend to agree. I mean, if, you know, it's fluff. If, it, if, it's, if it's the first, it can't be the second, so why do we have to have the second at all? Just get it, take it all out of there from after in operating conditions, take everything else out. I don't, I don't think it's even needed. Well, it goes on, it shall not be used for the storage. And maybe the problem that, like Ken started to point out, maybe I, I missed it, that sentence starts with rather required off street parking and loading was added, and loading. So when you take that off and say it's required off street parking spaces shall be used solely for this list. And I, I don't have a problem with the period there, but then, but, but it's. But then it goes on to talk about the storage of things that are not permitted. Yeah, but if we're only allowing what's in the first sentence, how do we get to say what we're not allowing? We're only allowing what's in the first sentence. Well, it's because we added, I added the word and loading spaces, the and loading oh, okay. from our discussion that that probably should not have been added. I don't think so. This is required for off streets parking spaces for the parking of blah 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 and not for the storage of. Looks like the word and loading now. Yeah, I, I think we, we made a mistake adding that word for words. Okay. Like I said, you, when you say parking and loading spaces, you're talking about two separate. Right. Two, two types entirely different things. Okay. Hey, anyway. It also then says it shall not be used for temporary storage. Or other temporary, temporary storage, right. Other temporary storage. Unless there's screening. I still think you need to stop after. <laughs> or you can just say it shall not be used for storage. Still have that question of well, I, I crossed it off. I, I remember putting that on there thinking, hmm, what can I really do? Yeah, and this whole we're, thing we're model this after this, is, this, is, this whole section is off street parking, right? Right. So all that other stuff doesn't have anything, it's not relative.
to pay them a little or not at all. Take the end loading out of the introduction, out of the heading. I think you know, I think use of off street parking and loading spaces, period. It was done. Well, it's it's like the headline for that section. Oh, it is? All of them have the. All of them have a headline. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like the subject material. Okay. Yeah. Unless we struggle with it later, then. Down in 5D. section O. Right. You know, we're saying that that the um, all street parking is for licensed vehicles in operating condition. Basically, period. Yes. The but but then we say that temporary storage. No, that's wrong. We took out the temporary storage unless they are located in designated space. It has yeah. nothing to do with it. I don't think we took it out. I haven't taken it out yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the second. That has nothing to do with parking. That's something totally different. It's using parking for temporary storage, which is what it says. I mean, it's, it's yeah. about using parking spaces for temporary storage, mm -hmm. that we would mm -hmm. not allow that. Temporary storage. Temporary outdoor storage. Yeah. Staging area is not parking. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the parking spaces, what we can use it for. I know. Exactly. We cannot use it for storage. And our staging either. Well, when when the delivery van shows up, the straight truck, and the guy's gonna drag his forklift out of the back of the building, take a pallet off, and he sets it down in the parking lot until he can move it into his building, that's a staging area. And maybe he doesn't own a forklift. It has to come tomorrow, but the truck came a day early. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of using a parking space for staging. Well, or others, unless they are located in a designated staging area and they don't do that in any case, that I don't know. I mean, if it's a designated staging area, it's not a parking space. Oh, I, okay, I, okay, I get that point. That, I mean, you, again, they had the same thing with loading. Uh, I mean, was, so would you be okay with this or other temporary storage period? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes course. more sense. Yeah, I don't, you know, the, the part I have a problem with is the screen fence or otherwise fully shielded. I mean, we, public we, view. I mean, this, if we, it's going to be temporary. We, yeah. We, we were talking about parking. I mean, parking. Yeah. Staging area is not parking. Maybe you might have a guy, you know, guy for truck goes in there with his car and going to the truck store and got a boat on the back of it. That's fine. That's the license vehicle. You want to move it up? Yeah. Parking it there. Five D. This talks about the restricted, uh, the deed restrictions and restricted documents and how they're handled and where they're filed. If I added words in there to help fill that in. Uh, 
trying to trying to come up with an example in my mind of where this would apply. If I have a business and I don't have enough parking spaces to meet code, I can work out a deal with Joe across the street. Or but, but I have to get a some kind of legal document. I don't think that's going to work in the case of the one example that we were talking about a while ago that Jerry was referring to when he had the condo down here and uh, the owner releasing it from somebody. Yeah, right. He, no, I own the condo. He owned it, but so that. But he suggested he get an agreement with ISIV? No. Uh, two of the units were owner occupied, including mine. Uh, and Dana Hinkin managed the other two, the Ozark Mountain Rentals. And uh, he had a, a, a deal worked out with ISIV to park. I mean, the, Parking lots right right below that, and I showed it on the map. So it's a fifty yard walk, and um, you know I always thought that was a good idea to get temporary parking. But we're not going to. I mean, there's no way to work out a deed restriction in that no. sort of example. No, no, that's no. temporary. This is this example of I need. I'm going to put a bills of business on this lot. And I don't have room for the parking that I need for my business, but the guy who owns a lot next to me is willing to let me build my parking lot there. And it suggests in this that, okay, you're going to agree to that, but now we have to tie that parking to that building so that that parking lot can't become something else in the future. Right. It remains the parking lot for the business next door. That's what this says. We've got some examples of that now. I mean, that hot box pizza up there, or the nights they have uh, entertainment, they're, they're parked all over in all those places. I don't ever been by there. But I well, the, the parking lot gets used. It's there yeah. in front of all the frontages. Yeah, that, yeah those yeah. lights all go over at that unit. I know, but it's spilled over in the other, other units too. But you're not, <clears throat> but this is talking about your action. You're taking over that other lot. Are you, are you, are you impeaching, there's an impeaching part of that. You're going to need the use of it probably and you know, permanently tied to that business. Yeah. Um, again, so, it's probably never happened. But I don't know about that. Uh, well, this text was here for a reason from where we copied it from, and I just. Um, I I don't I don't not you know now that I understand the I circumstances that this would apply to, I guess I don't have a problem with it. I think it would work. Like you said, you know, if we if we allow somebody to build a building to run a business that would require ten parking spaces, but he only has room for four. Mm -hmm. But the guy next door will let him lease lease property to put the other six parking spaces on that has to be a permanent agreement otherwise someday those parking spaces would go away i don't think and then you'd have non-conforming i don't think you could use the lease i think you gotta buy it well that'd be the cleanest you know if i was doing business i'd want to own that property rather than just lease it but you can't force them in the ordinance to buy it. Possible. Okay. It you know it, it's almost more of this is in here almost more to protect the property owner than the city because uh, you know they could lose their business license if they if they lose their parking spaces and they're no longer in compliance they lose their business license. I, I don't know if I'm going to be. I think it's going to be a. It's going to be. A it's going to be a deterrent 
to somebody trying to build a building with too few parking spaces. Right. Would we allow them to construct a lease of parking spaces with another business? Would that be acceptable? You'd have to have some assurance that it was permanent. That's that's the thing. Yeah, they would, they would have to permanently lease this section of parking lot to this other business. In perpetuity. What about the situation of uh, Top Box Pizza, who maybe has an agreement with the medical part because it's medical, it's during the day, and their business is <laughs> a long walk. Yeah, that would be a long walk. I mean, that, that makes actually the most effective use of the parking spaces because of the difference in times uh, and still allows them to conduct business. Uh, but, it, you know, you never know what's going to happen with either property at any time. Yeah. In that specific instance, you know, the same owner owns all that whole that whole strip mall, and well, we're actually the city's actually leasing the the unit right next door to Hot Box Pizza for the, for the sheriff's department. So, you know, if if he were if the landlord were building that building from scratch. We would have to determine that the parking space is available there will accommodate all of the businesses. How do you know unless home. you know what kind of business is going in there too? And how can you even make that call? No, you have to without you have knowing to. what business is in there. Yeah. You have to make some assumption. If a DMV goes in there, <laughs> it's got you know a hundred people. You know, coming in there to get driver's licenses. I just don't know how you control it. I mean, if you look at the, the DMV and Berryville and the parking lot across the street, and then the courthouse is going on over there, and those are your choices for parking, and you're nearly any time you go over there, both lots are full. No, from a walk to the library. Yeah, yeah. park in the library. Yeah, it's exactly. awfully full. Cool. You go over there when they're having court day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. People are sitting in the parking lot. From from a planning standpoint, you know, all we can do is go by. And there are design standards for subdivisions and commercial parking, commercial areas, and stuff like that. That that you know have a recommended number of parking spaces. So per you know per unit per commercial unit that doesn't guarantee that, that that there won't be times when there's inadequate parking but just hypothetically if we had all this in place and they were going to put that hot box piece in, like pizza in that little strip restaurant and many times they take up almost after hours they take up every parking spot mm -hmm. and then the audience is freezing mm -hmm. How would we deal with that? I don't know that the city would. I think that would be between the tenants and the landlord. It's hard to find all these spots. But the, if the property was constructed per, you know, per the city standards, and that proves to be inadequate for what the landlord ended up doing with his business, that's. So in that particular strip mall, or strip of buildings, if it was set up as a retail, general retail, we would have required one parking space per 250 square feet. If it was intended to be for a restaurant, it's one space per 150 square feet for the first 2,500. So that retail outlet, whether it has the adequate spacing under this or not, I don't know, but okay. there, there is a requirement for future development. Mm -hmm. So a thousand square foot uh, retail, size of this room, would require four parking spaces. It may impose a restriction on the landlord as far as uh, occupancy of the buildings in order to limit the parking. Required. Like hypothetically, hot box pizza could be limited to a 
hundred, you know, uh, capacity of a hundred customers because that would require you know, 50 parking spaces or something like that. And the last then was the section seven. I just inserted the uh, operable at seven e. What word did you say about seven? Seven e. I just entered, entered the word currently operable. We're talking about boats, trailers, recreation vehicles. So you know, don't want to see one sitting there in perpetuity with no engine on it, or the hood's up, or the trailer has no wheels on it. Which section are you in? And seven e. Seven. And if I'm reading this correctly, it, it allows to do a, a trailer or a boat, camper, on the side of the house. Do, does that does that have to meet also the setback requirements? I mean there there are a couple on holiday island drive that are on the side and they I know damn well they're right up against the they're in the, in the easement. Yeah. As long as it's not a permanent structure, um, they're allowed to park in the easement. What about uh, somebody's uh, uncle and aunt come in their motor home and want to park in your uh, driveway for, for two nights there in town? Would that be allowable? He says no. He says no. D says no. D says no. And I use for living, sleeping, or housekeeping purpose. Well, I would argue that for a temporary, that we ought to allow for a temporary. Yeah, most cities have, you got to get a temporary uh, permit to allow that. Why do they require a permit? If I know my aunt and uncle are coming for a week and they're going to live in their mobile home in the driveway, I would go to the city and I would get a temporary permit to allow that and they put the permit on the window of the RV or whatever. Can you do that? Because I had to do that once in the city I lived in. I just wondered if you could explain what purpose that serves. So it so says it's okay to do it when we say it's not okay to do it. Oh, so if we see someone getting in and out of it for the, for a week, we and you've also that, got that, it, that it's not the residents living in it. Yeah, and there's, there's also another. There's also another thing to consider is if I store my camper down at uh, in one of these lots down here, and uh, you know, like back in Oklahoma, they allowed two days. You could bring it in two days for you to load it up with all your supplies and, and everything. I mean, it wouldn't be living in it. Well, that's, that's a good point. I think. Well, it says that's what we talked about less than eight hours. If you want to park it on the I don't know. Park. It's not parking. You've never traveled with my <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> I mean, I've had, I lived, I lived in a city once where you had to have a permit for overnight parking on the street because they came through with the street sweepers and stuff and you anyway. couldn't be parked on the street. You know, I think there ought to be something in there about temporary involvement. I think that's a good point. Well, well there is. The it's B is dollars. B is except except for the purpose of loading and unloading during a period of less than eight hours. Mm -hmm. Or so eight hours. Where, where, where are you? Seven B. Seven B. So I think Gary's suggesting we add, we just something add hours about, to that. Uh, you know, no, a, a period of less than a week or oh, yeah. or, 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 or no longer than 24 hours. 24 hours, two days. Because I used to do the same thing with my motor home when I had it. Well, I yeah, I, I did too. I, We'd load it up on Thursday to be leaving Friday afternoon. Well, I know that I know Eight that hours a lot of people who RV go to their friend's house in Kansas City or Wichita or wherever mm -hmm. and park on their driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and use their electricity. And use their electricity. I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, 
You're suggest the text, I'll plug it in. in. Uh -huh. Suggest the text, I'll plug it in. I think you can find that in another city. I don't know. It wasn't here. Well, I'm loading or unloading 24 hours. Yeah, change that to 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, that because you don't want to have to load it on Thursday and then take it back to the no. to the lot and then bring it back. 24 hours is so for a period of not more than 24 hours. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Is that just on the street or is that on the no, it's it's on the no, on driveway? Well. It says it's parked between the front of the residence and the street. Right. Or well, that, that's the storage the one. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's what it's coming from. It's outdoor parking. So the boat trailer is not parked in the area between the front of the residence and the street, except for the purpose of unloading for 24 hours. That should be sufficient. That's more than they've got up in there. What is going on outside? Sunshine. Sunshine. Uh -oh. It's You're supposed to break by three o'clock. Somebody got a camera? <laughs> I've seen that since I've been home. Okay. Well, we went right along. No, that's not. Well, I thought you wanted to add maybe for a recreational vehicle that's uh, being used by visitors. Yeah, I think we ought to address that. I, mean, I don't know. I've uh, never thought of as permitted by the city. So what? The man wanted to uh, put a permit where you city. had to get a permit uh, so for somebody to. Yeah, I don't them. know that we're. I don't think. I don't know that we're ready to issue permits, I'm but issue. I think we could allow up to up a to week. A week. Yeah. yeah, that's. See, I would rather do that if I get the permit just because it's allowed. Street, we're talking about no. off oh, fishing, off fishing off discs, or snake eggs, bird eggs. Yeah. No, but I'd like to have that in there just so none of my relatives <laughs> are staying. <laughs> the, the city ordinance says you can't stay longer than three days. <laughs> we'd, we'd love to have you stay, but yeah, the city's no, 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 yeah, $200 uh, a day. Yeah. 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 Not, yeah. If it's an in-law, it's two days. <laughs> okay, so if we say this, recreational vehicles may be inhabited by visitors to the property for a period of not to exceed X number of days, that's when the guy can buy a lot and park his trailer and live there for a week and go home. Is that what you want? No. no okay. What do you want to say then? It's a, it's a, I believe it like it says. It says it's an it's occupied no, lot. <laughs> A visitor it's not used for living. A visitor is not on a vacant lot. A visitor is at. It's not a vacant lot. It has to be a developed lot. It's a developed lot. Okay. It's staying in your driveway. This is on your driveway. I mean, it could be they purchased a new home or got, and they're getting ready to move in. And they, they can go, to, they can go to the driveway, the too. Campground. They could be the visitors to their own development. We have that covered. You know, we have that covered in the building. You don't have, you don't have a problem. house being built. Well, I don't know. I've, I've had two motor homes in my life and spent many a day in somebody's driveway. Oh, I have. I live in my own. How about this? Recreational vehicles may be inhabited by visitors to a residence. Yes. For a period not to exceed, what? How many days you want to give them? Seven. 14, 24, 36, 58. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Three days. Three days. Back up. <laughs> Start at seven. Start at seven. Three days, it starts to stay. Oh, yeah. Unless we hear an eight, seven sounds good. <laughs> well, that's I think you're over the log, it's oh. like 24 hours. Yeah, well, and nobody, you, who's going to monitor They could maybe come back if we you can't. Come you can't. You can't. Come back there's there's lots apparently we can't monitor, but you. But if somebody comes and complains, yeah. then we can say, okay. And that's, that's the whole issue. Yeah, Most of these the are. Thing. We're not going to be going out sending somebody out looking for this stuff. Okay. It's like my neighbor's been there for two weeks. But most so people will. Dang it, well, they're not, most people are not going to read this stuff. No, but if they call, if they call the city hall and complain about their neighbor having guests for a month, a month then we can tell them there can't.
can't do that because of this. I don't want to affect everybody to read this. I don't want to read There's a whole lot of people aren't paying any attention to stuff we already read. Uh, okay. okay. All right, moving on. That's the end of the document. Yay! For today. For today. Oh boy. Okay. Are Are you going to now? Is the next step to turn this into a a resolution for each one? Resolution format that can be easily converted to an ordinance. Yes. And so our steps will be to take this text and put it into a resolution that the planning commission would have a public hearing on each section. And then um, if we accept that text and recommend it to the city council for adoption. But one public hearing. Yes, a planning commission hearing. We'll, we'll cover it all in one hearing. Okay, that's all. And can we get this reviewed by the attorney before we do that? Yeah, absolutely. 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 Yeah, we got to. Yeah, that's. We got to know we're on firm ground. There's some big uh, question marks on a couple of those. Whoa. So the only exception I have is the blues that we put in. Uh, 21 for parking that Pat's going to work on. I'll work on those and send them to you. Okay. Y'all, we're going to put a restriction on Pat. He cannot play any golf until he gets that done. Well, I think the way just so I guess if we're going to if we're going to approach this the next planning commission meeting, I need to know roughly three weeks in advance of the meeting. So I need to know by the Christmas. Uh, third Tuesday of the third Tuesday of the month to get the notice in the newspaper and let it run for 15 days. Yeah, yeah for the hearing. So if we if we can't get that done, then we're gonna have to do this in January or in February. Yeah. Um, well, well you, it doesn't have to be at a regular meeting. We can have a special meeting for it, but we're not that urgent. I, I will uh, put my big boy pants on and try to get that done with signs where you can have that. Okay. Oh, or you not really speaking of signs, there were two things that I wanted to uh, suggest for seeds I wanted to plant on signs. Um, I like the idea of having height limitations on signs. You know, when Dollar General opened up here, they put a nice sign up. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the sign. But when you're driving down to Fayetteville on 45 and you drive past that new Dollar General, they have a sign that's you know down by the ground with a nice stone base around it, and uh, you know, and it, it it just it's just nicer to not have all of the you know high elevation. Uh, clutter. So well, I, I've looked in that there there are a couple of ordinances around that, that have that. And I mentioned the, the, the two by two mm -hmm. signs for home businesses. And, uh, and that would take care of that one up in the you know, that's just a, a shell now too. You know that, that would that would have to go away. Um, secondly, um, signs. Um, I think we need to be very clear about what constitutes a permanent sign and what constitutes a temporary sign and when temporary signs can be used. Yeah, we talked about yes. that on those uh, garage sales. And well, there's there's at least two commercial signs up in the park right now that are basically four by four frames built on skids. Sitting out on the sitting out in the you know the H. Media. I. Lynn was one of them and Paul Hartwood. You know, the mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce has one. Yeah, we 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 don't want you know we don't want those kinds of signs to be permanent signs. That's fine for temporary, but um, as a permanent sign, they need to be permanent, not just sitting on a you know, nailed to a skid or something. Yeah, there is from Oklahoma City. There are no such things as permanent signs. There's no signs until the next tornado season. That's exactly right. Uh, and I, I have, it's, it's, I take offense of this little two by two sign that's just plugged in the ground over here on the corner by the Eagle. Mm -hmm. It has 
has nothing to do with the property owner and somebody advertising whatever. No. So where those can be placed or can't be placed. One wonders if they even had permission to put it there. People no. just ignoring it. No. That's what I'm sure. Uh, I mean, it, there, there are all sorts of things that are not done properly here that I've made mental notes of and, and looked at. But the, the space up there at the corner of Holiday Island Drive and the, I mean, the last election, I mean, signs where you can barely see the term. Yes. Uh, it's in a kind of gray area to limit campaign signs, but that was, that, I think we need to address that. Oh, the island drive and where? Next to the, where, uh, that Rob Knapp's building. That, that, oh, the info center up there. Yeah, the info center. Uh, yeah, he allows any kind of sign to be placed there at this point. Yeah, but I mean, during this last election, there were a couple of candidates who were going to see who could put the biggest sign up. Now, the real estate signs from residential property. It seems to me that we already have a, some kind of a. Well, there is some in the covenant. There's some restriction in the covenants on that. Yeah, I know, but even I thought maybe we even had something in our. An existing ordinance already, but I don't think so. if we don't, we you know we don't you know we want a standard. We want it to be limited to standard real estate signs, not the banner that's um, there's one on Holiday Island Drive right now on a vacant lot that's basically a banner about six feet long. There's one on Shields and there's one up in the in the park. So, hmm, that's just, doesn't look nice. It looks kind of like a free-for-all. Yeah, I mean, we, we waste it. We don't get to outside when the sun shines. Yeah, we, we missed our, <laughs> we, blew the we missed our four and a half <laughs> minutes of sunshine. <laughs> okay, so just to be clear, so everybody understands, when I get this text from Jerry, if, if we get it, and when I get it from Pat, I'll plug it in, I'll redistribute it, but we don't discuss it online. We don't discuss it via email, so I'm just gonna send you what they gave me. I'll try to put that into resolution form so that we can schedule a hearing. Are we done? Okay. When, when does what we have go to the attorney? Before, before the hearing, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, before I put that all together. So I'll, I'll finish up these edits and I'll send the document to Dan first and he can get it off to the Are attorney. We're going to do this in the planning review well, and the planning commission. After we see what is written. City council. You mean at the attorney? Well, maybe a quick he, special meeting just to yeah, approve he, it. Yeah, if he has objections or revisions, we, we need to do that. I well, would agree. I, I didn't get, you know, what Pat is submitting. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. We can revise it at the hearing if we wanted to do it then, or we can do it ahead of time. Maybe we're just pressing and pushing this too fast because we have more text to come in. I, I, I don't think we want to have two hearings to do this, right? No. I, no. I, I just didn't think it would be appropriate to do our markup right before a hearing because okay. people come prepared. That's true. Having read what we've approved. Yeah. Okay. All right. That so we need to have one more meeting to approve whatever they want to do. Now, whether it's hearing. before the attorney or maybe just after the attorney. After, I would go oh, after yeah. the attorney. And that would be the second Tuesday in January. But it's a special meeting that the... We can discuss the, the text changes in a special meeting. If we're going to have a hearing on our regular meeting dates, I have to have the everything posted on the web or in the newspaper 15 days prior to that. And that means I have to have a whole week before that because of the posting deadlines with the newspaper. I, I can pretty much guarantee you we won't do the hearing before February. Okay. Just, okay. just because the, you know, the attorney is going to need time to okay. do some research and. I, I thought we were talking about us having a meeting before the hearing, but the hearing we will be. The hearing is is one of our meetings. Is yeah, the hearing is a planning commission hearing. Okay. Meeting. At a regular meeting. More than likely in our January meeting, we'll try to come up with the final draft okay. that we'll present in the hearing and at the February meeting. Okay. 
I like right. right. Great. Anything else on, nope. what else is on the, the actual new business? Comments. Otherwise, public comments? Uh, I will say, City of Alice, uh, no signage, temporary or elsewise, can go on public property. So the sign you're talking about, Lynn, is probably not legal. Right. Yeah, if it's in the easement, it's. Yes. Uh, banners are usually only allowed for a single use for a one day event, cannot be used for signage. Political signs after the election have to be removed within a certain time. So that's just some of the things that the that, city of Dallas had. That, yeah, that, that hadn't really been a problem, which surprises me. No, they're pretty good here, right? Um, no, used to, any of the on the road department used to go out and pick up all those signs that, like that one down there, um, the uh, landing. Oh, and you can't put them on utility poles either. That's another. Well, you should. Yeah. Um, but that that's that's a, that sign shouldn't be there. And any other? Thank you. Any other public comments? Do you have a date as to when the OZO will be formed? Have you gotten an email from Linda looking at your new email account yet? I don't know. <laughs> I think the answer is no. <laughs> Do I have an email account? Do I email saying you sent No, I sent you here is Don's email account that I have. Or oh, why don't you set it up? No, so we haven't sent you the invite yet. <laughs> And I have just read that. Okay, and I, and something's wrong then because I sent an email to them telling them this is what we need to do and it didn't get rejected. It didn't go anywhere. I mean, I didn't get told it got rejected. It's sitting in his inbox, but no, it's it's. I don't know if he has an inbox. You have a great his account. <laughs> no. All right. So when do we, we need to get organized and get that uh, probably done in January, as soon as we can to get it organized? What we're going to do? We'll have a. A session where we're going to talk about, I called it an orientation. Yeah, I'm going to leave town around January 6th. Okay. We'll be back until around the 2nd of February. Okay. All right. Good. And it's just a little way time before that. All right. It'll be an orientation meeting and it won't be a, it'll be public in the fact that we have to conduct our business in public, sure. but it won't be a meeting that I have to put a, uh, in the newspaper because we're not conducting business about variances. So it's okay that we have just a, an orientation session. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to get that scheduled very soon in, in January. Yeah. And I'll follow up with Linda about your email account so you okay. can read what I sent. Okay. And what, what, what Steve mailed to you? I did. I sent to Steve and, and Don both. And Steve. You, you didn't know anything about it. Right. So Steve doesn't either. Exactly. No. What did I say? You tested the email account you sent it to. Right. I tested it. I tested it to see if it get rejected. It didn't get rejected, so I went ahead and drafted another email. Oh, you're saying that doesn't exist? Not yet. Not okay. I did not set it up because you were no, testing it. I didn't set it up. Okay. <laughs> right. I was testing it because I didn't hear back from it. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. You should have said, well, set these up. All right. I'll let you work that out. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Any uh, commissioner comments? <laughs> Scheduling, we already talked about uh, our regular meetings for January and February on the regularly scheduled dates. Uh, special meetings, none at this point, although we can always call one. Workshops, none at this time. But we can always set one up. Mr. Mayor, you did have a comment. Um, there was an issue that came up uh, several months ago about a unit that we were provided with a declaration of reservations we weren't aware of. So it's my plan to get an ordinance written for the city council to consider the text change only so we don't need to have a hearing. But I think we need to put it on record that we've talked about it and that's okay to do that. Yes. So guys, that's, do you remember that discussion we had? We found we got a, uh, a covenant after the fact, after our ordinance was passed, oh, okay. and it was zoned differently, so we just need to fix our tables. It's okay with the Planning Commission we do that? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, there's going to be circumstances where, in our judgment, it doesn't, you know, a, a public hearing to change the zoning ordinance wouldn't be uh, necessary if it's just correcting typos or text change or something like that. This was one of those circumstances. We weren't creating or modifying actual uh, zoning ordinance. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Jerry moved to adjourn. Do I have a second? second? No second? All right, we'll keep meeting. <laughs> Pat seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Or adjourn. Uh, it's, 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 it's,